So you want to get started in open source, but you just don't know how. Make sure to stay until the end of this video so I can share with you all the tips and tricks to get started. Let's go! Check it out. I've been working in open source for the last four years and in the last one I had created a complete ecosystem on open source packages for 3D on view called TreCS. And in this journey I learned a lot from starting translating Nox documentation into Spanish into creating my own library and ecosystem of packages for open source. Used by more than 350 projects and having more than 9K downloads per month. That's why I want to share with you five tips and tricks that helped me a lot in my journey so you can get started as well. Tip number one, don't be afraid. And this might sound silly, but it's actually really important because most of the people like me suffer of something called the imposter syndrome. I was afraid of showing my code to the world and get publicly criticized by the authors when I did it. Let's face it, everyone has an ego and we desperately try to protect it. But the reality is far from it because open source, if it can be defined by one word, is welcoming. The open source community is not a stack overflow. At the end of the experience, I was happy because I got a lot of constructive feedback from the authors and I learned a lot on how to improve my contributions in GitHub and eventually it got merged. So I was like, vamos, let's go. <laughs> Tip number two, start small. Something that will help you battle this imposter syndrome that we mentioned before is to get started with the small things. You don't need to create a groundbreaking new feature that will change the story of tech in your first contribution. A lot of new contributors often tell me that they feel overwhelmed because they don't know the code enough and they don't feel secure to uh, change something or try to solve a bug. And that's not necessarily the first step that you can do in open source. You can start by fixing a typo in the documentation or helping out translating the documentation to another language. For example, in my case, I started contributing in open source by helping out translating Nox2 documentation into Spanish. Believe me, as an author, I can say that those types of contributions are amazing and really helpful for us because we cannot solve everything every time. And if you help somebody to correct a typo, to translate the documentation, even fixing a small bug, I don't know, in typing, it's already a lot, a lot of value that you are adding to that library. Tip number three, look for first contribution welcoming labels on GitHub. So the majority of projects in GitHub will have a section in the issues with some labels that are specifically welcoming to new contributors. And the majority of cases is good for this issue and also help wanted. You can also see PR welcome as a label to get started. If the author doesn't share you the link to those uh, issues with the label, you can always find it uh, going to the repository in the tab of issues. You will find a section in the top that uh, promotes discovering new issues with that label, as well as the link for the contribution guide. I highly recommend you, you read through the contribution guide that the author put in the repository because sometimes we require certain formatting for uh, features and branches names, as well as commit uh, specific rules to get everything organized and probably uh, automated in GitHub Actions. So it's really important that you read it through because this will save you a lot of time and a lot of feedback whenever you create your first PR. Not to mention that the authors will already love you, like big time. Tip number four, subscribe to this channel. Now seriously, subscribe, what you doing? Hit that like button, come on. See, what's new? Subscribe, subscribe. Now the real tip number four, which is keep contributions focus. What do I mean by focus? It's always better to start creating a small reproduction or small playgrounds of use cases. Because when you're using a library, you eventually will find something that you want to improve or you'll find a bug that should be solved. So if you create contributions that stay focused on a single use case, for example, I'm using a UI library and that UI library doesn't have a component that I will need, I probably will create a feature request saying, hey, this is the use case that I will need this extra component. How can I help? 
With this approach, you will be focusing on a small and manageable task that will help you reduce the learning curve of using the uh, library and also contributing to it. You will have a better understanding on how the library works under the hood and, and this will open the door to even more meaningful contributions in the future. So remember, even if you're working on a new feature or solving an issue, keep things small and focus. Work on granular commits and focus on only one use case at a time. And finally, tip number five, there is not such a thing as too much information. This one goes hand by hand with the latest tip. Let's do a quick comparison between this ticket and this one. You see the difference, right? The second one provides a lot more information to the author, making it easier for the author to change context and understand what the user wants with that feature request, or in the case of a bug, what the issue is and what functionality is not working correctly, if it's the case. Sometimes there could be questions and you can correct it with a workaround or just a comment. The same goes for PRs or pull requests. The more info you add there for the author to revise your code and understand what changes that you did, the better. It's even better when you connect the PR to the actual ticket where it comes from, even if it's a feature or a bug. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to provide a reproduction link with the steps of reproducing the issue when you're creating one. Why is that? Because uh, ourselves, the authors, we are tackling a lot of issues on their one day and we need to change context between one and another to understand the use cases from the community. So if you already provide a reproducible use case and remember the, the past tip about re reduce it and focus the scopes, this will allow us to understand the issue right away and understand how we can tackle it. And you will be surprised how many times you find a solution to that issue or actually find it that there was no issue at all while doing the reproduction link. It happens to me every f***ing time. I go there, I open a, a ticket, I start working on the reproduction link and then suddenly I find out that it was my fault and there is no issue. Great, Alvaro, great. So please, every time you are creating a bug, Add a reproduction link. There are several tools that you could use. There are some libraries that have a single file like uh, Playgrounds, like Vue, or for example, you can create a small reproductions in Stacklets. It's bonus time and I give you another tip that will help you a lot and is to be kind. Remember that you're working on a community that actually does this for free. Most of the open source projects doesn't have any founding or any sponsor whatsoever. We kind of doing this because we're passionate about it. So whenever you're working in open source, always be kind with everyone. That also covers authors when responding to issues. The importance of continue having a healthy environment between the authors and contributors and be able to constructively work on open source is what makes it so good. No matter how frustrated you can feel because something is not working, Remember, there is a person in his free time trying to solve it for you. That's the best piece of advice that I can give you today. I really hope that this video was useful for you and that now you have all the tools to get your first contributions in open source. If so, don't forget to subscribe and drop a like, that will help us a lot. Please add in the comments below another tips that you want to share with the community about open source in general and how to get started. Love you, bye.